Ray Bossier, welcome to the show. Welcome to World's Best. Laban, my friend, thank you very much for having me here. I'm honored and grateful to be here with you today. Well, not as honored and grateful as I am to have you on here, Ray. But I'm going to throw you under the bus with a really challenging one first up. What are you the best in the world at? I am the world's best anxiety and depression coach for parents. And how do you be the world's best at that? I tap into my higher self, um, years of experience of going through my own struggles, knowing what works after many trial and error, finding what worked to be able to overcome my own struggles and being able to help give that information and help support parents to be able to get the same outcomes as I have. So for someone that was listening to this, that's just hit a, a point in their life that's a new low for them, and maybe they found this podcast through being a regular subscriber or they just stumbled across this, whichever way the universe conspired to help them, what's one single piece of advice that you would give someone who's really struggling mentally right now? The best piece of advice that I can give them is to take unwavering action because everything starts with unwavering action. Change doesn't come to you. You have to build it yourself. And that starts by taking unwavering action, which gives you traction. Traction will lead to momentum, which is key to be able to transform your life and impact your world. And momentum leads you to hope. And once you have hope, you start to believe. And then once you start to believe, you start to see it. So it all starts by taking unwavering action. I love that, Ray. I want to hear about a time in your life when you didn't take unwavering action and what happened. There's quite a bit in my life that I never took unwavering action. And the one that really sticks out most to me was when I was a kid, because when you're a youngin, you don't really know any better. You find yourself in, like myself, toxic situations, toxic families. And I was struggling with trying to be able to maneuver between my families to make the most of it, to be able to give the best that I can. And I let my family issues get to me. I had to support my own mother on her own mental health struggles. So by her leaning on me for support, I wasn't able to sort support myself. And as I didn't receive the support that I needed, things just kept getting worse and worse. So I didn't take unwavering action at that time because I couldn't. I didn't know any better. And for many people out there, many parents nowadays, or anyone who wants to become a parent, childhood always seems to be where a lot of the problems, a lot of our issues, our struggles with anxiety, depression stem from. So what I learned now from going back to then is that what we know now helps us to overcome what we didn't know then. It helps us to take the unwavering action that we need to do today to get to the next step to get to the destination that you want, that you choose. I really, really love that you said that, Ray. And in my own experience, during times of absolute trauma and disruption and disarray, I found it impossible to be able to even use my brain to think rationally. And so for that person that you were giving that advice about unwavering action, who, whose brain is so cogged, fogged up and, and blocked at the moment, what's a single direction or an example that you might be able to share that they can, they can action? I never had hope when I was young. And I never had hope throughout my entire life. My struggle started at five years old with my first PTSD incident and lasted decades. So what I can tell people who are going through this issue, still struggling with their struggles, that even if they don't see hope, even if they don't believe that they can change, even if they don't believe 
that they can be fixed. They can. Once you start taking unwavering action, even 1% better every day, one small step every day to be 1% better will lead you to be 365% better in one year. Imagine, Laban, if you took one unwavering step every day to be 1% better, what's the Laban 365 days from now look like to you? Hardly different human being. And it doesn't matter if you would never have known how to be able to get there. It doesn't matter if you've ever believed that you're not meant to live a life outside of struggling with living in survival mode like I did. You can go with having no hope and still transform your life. And everyone out there can do that. And I know this because I did it. And if I can do it, and I'm just a regular person, if I can do it, they definitely can do it. But it takes taking unwavering action and it takes having the right kind of support. Because with the right support, studies have shown that you're 95% more likely to achieve your goals. You gotta start somewhere. And there's a quote by one of my favorite bands, Rage Against the Machines, that says, it's gotta start somewhere. It's gotta start sometime. What better place than here? And what better time than now? Today, this moment is all we got. The future, the past, they don't exist. We only live in the moment. So it starts by taking away unwavering action in this moment. And the impact that, that this unwavering action has had on the people in your life? It's had a gigantic impact on my family. It's allowed me to be able to break the generational curses that have plagued my family. My family struggles with mental health. And I grew up in a toxic situation, as I mentioned. And I swore to myself as a kid that I would never bring a child into another toxic situation. I would never bring my own child into that situation. And one night, one freezing cold February evening in Canada, I left work, tried to start the car. It barely started because it was just freezing cold. And it dawned on me as I sat there putting my head on the steering wheel that at that time, the relationship between my wife and I was toxic, nothing short of toxic. And a lot of that had to do with my own personal struggles. And it dawned on me that my worst nightmare was coming true, that my own daughter was coming into a toxic situation that I swore to myself would never happen. And I told myself at that moment, no. It's not happening. It has to end with me. And by taking the unwavering action, I took that next step to be able to make myself into the person I want to be, to take the steps towards becoming my higher self, towards giving my daughter my best, towards giving my wife my best, towards giving my family my best. And because of that, my relationships are better now than they have ever, ever been. Fantastic. And I have the, the pleasure of having known you for a little bit before we had an opportunity to get on this podcast together. And i got to say, Ray, you're an inspirational dude. And, and I, I love the passion that comes through because you've got your own platform. You create your own podcast as well. What's that called? Definitely. Uh, my own podcast is called From Surviving to Thriving. And it can be found on any pat, uh, platform player. It's a, it's a podcast for parents to be able to help them with the support they need and the tools and the discussions and the stories to be able to help them overcome their struggles, to be able to give their best to themselves, their loved ones, their careers, and even their dreams. There's a, there's a gentleman by the name of Dr. Chris Palmer, who was a former guest on, on the podcast, who is a, an associate professor of psychiatry at Harvard Medical School. And I found him so fascinating because the work that he's doing is dealing with the worst end of the market when it comes to anxiety, depression, uh, the worst suicidal uh, patients you can imagine. And what he's been doing for the last decade, Ray, is quite remarkable. He's been utilizing a ketogenic diet that they developed for epileptic children more than 120 years ago. And to this date, he has been successful in putting one third of all type two a bipolar disorder, which is the untreatable one, chronic suicidal 
uh, tendencies and schizophrenia. One third into full remission coming off all medication and all symptoms gone. Another third dramatic reductions in medication and symptoms. And then the last third at this point, no noticeable change. And they're just starting to dig deep into the science. And it's interesting when we talk about the three sort of catalysts that, that trigger these anxiety and depression, it's, it's diet, it's environment, and it's stress. And I'm curious to know if you're, if you're observing or if you're aware of any of the three or the combination that might have had an impact on you and your family growing up. Definitely. And that's a great study and definitely worth looking into for sure. Um, my environment was definitely a toxic environment. Um, so that definitely didn't help. Um, even outside of my home, um, I never felt safe. I, I was always experiencing whether it was bullies or um, mental and physical abuse at the hands of teachers and such. Uh, diet, I was never really given the proper diet as a child. I look back now and I understand that I love my mother uh, who had recently just passed away earlier in the year. And even throughout her own struggles, she was still my hero. And she did the best she could with what she had. But the choices when it came down to diet were not exactly the best choices to make. You know, as a child, I was allowed to have, you know, soda or pop, whatever you want to call it. Um, I was not able to really get a bigger sense of, you know, a better taste for vegetables. You know, I was always kind of catered to with, you know, processed food, which as you and I both know is not exactly great for your body, let alone your mental health. So yeah, those definitely played a factor within, you know, my experience. And, and I suppose the, one of the most interesting parts of this experience that I'm keen to learn more about is the forgiveness component. You, you sound like you've absolved your mother of any, any wrongdoing now and have forgiven her. I have, yes. She did the best she could and, you know, she had her own struggles. She did a lot of work. She, she went in and out of the hospital um, for many times throughout my, my childhood, um, teens, 20s. And, you know, she was always there for me. So I, my relationship with her was always pretty solid. However, there were the struggles where as a child, I was leaned on as kind of like a, a pseudo spouse. So the support that she wasn't getting from my father, um, she was requiring for me which forced me to grow up as a child so that's one aspect of uh, the struggles I've gone through uh, but I've had other family members who have taken out their hatred for my mother on me as a child which is one of the big lessons I learned in life that no matter how much you hate a person or dislike a person or what that person has done for you you don't take that hatred out on an innocent child Children are not to blame for the mistakes of their parents. Beautifully put, Ryan. And what's, what's one of the main benefits of being able to release and forgive in your own personal experience? It allows you to move on. Those chains that we get stuck with, with anxiety and depression, many of them, we put there ourselves. Sure, other people have played a role in having these chains, but by not releasing the chains, we keep ourselves stuck, especially in the past when it comes to depression. And there's a quote by Buddha that says, you know, I can't say the exact words, but basically hating is like drinking poison and hoping the other person dies, which is quite the morbid quote. But at the same time, it's the same with when you keep that hatred, when you keep that dislike for something that someone's done for you, you keep it within you. You keep just oozing in it, saturating yourself in it, and expecting that it's going to have an impact on the other person when really it's only being toxic to you. So by holding on to these chains, you just keep yourself still. You don't make progress. You're not able to overcome your struggles. And sometimes the hardest part of this journey is simply letting go. Brilliant, Ray. It, it, it's so underrated and it's, it's interesting meeting 
everyday people that are so resentful and so angry, not realizing the damage it does to themselves. And it's not absolving the person of any responsibility or any of the fact that what they did, it's not like you need to reconcile with someone that, that did something so horrendous to you. It's, that's a boundary setting challenge for a lot of people, but so beautifully simple. And in terms of the, the work that you're doing, what, what does being the world's best mean to you? To me, it always means striving to be my higher self, striving to give my best to those I serve. It always comes from a place of desire to help others. Because let's face it, when you and I talk and when people talk, what we say to others doesn't really matter. Because what we say to others is not about them, it's about us. How we serve others is about how we serve us. We give ourselves our best so that we can give our best to the rest. And when it comes down to being the world's best, my goal is to be able to provide the best service that I can to help others because of what I've went through, because I went through decades of my own personal struggles where there was no hope, there was no compassion, there was no learning forgiveness, there was no self-confidence, no self-esteem. There's always looking for validation through others. So my serving others is a way to not only heal from my own past, but take my experience and knowledge and be able to help others. So that way their journeys don't take decades of time, wasted time and frustration like mine did to be able to give them the shortcuts that I wish I had as I went through my own struggles. So serving from a higher place is where I attempt to achieve on a day-to-day -day basis with everyone I come in contact, contact with. Lovely, Ray, brilliant. And I know there's people listening to this right now that are, how can I be a part of what Ray's doing? How can I, how can I find you? There are a couple of different ways. You can find the podcast from surviving to thriving podcast.com. It's available on iTunes and any other platform, as well as we do have a support tribe that I go live on Facebook once a week, sometimes twice a week, to be able to provide support, knowledge, tools, skills. And that's available at empowerup.info forward slash tribe. So they can find me there if they would like more personalized support. You should absolutely be going there and checking out some of Ray's amazing uh, podcasts already in the short time that he's been doing. So you're doing amazing work. Do you have any concluding thoughts today, Ray? The one concluding thought that I want to be able to share with everyone is that it doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter where you've come from. It doesn't matter what you've had to endure. Everything in life is a lesson. How you take the lesson and how you control the narrative is how you move forward. I had an instance where a SWAT team busted down my apartment door years ago. They were looking for my neighbor and they hit the wrong apartment. This caused massive PTSD, anxiety, and depression. And I used to be the type of person who always felt like a victim. But there was that one moment after that one incident where I said, not again, enough's enough. I'm not going to be the victim. I'm not going to choose the narrative that the SWAT team came into my house, put me on, my, on the ground with a knee jammed in my spine. I choose to make a different narrative. And I made that part of my journey. I made that part of my ability to overcome and grow. And this is the power in choosing your own narrative. So it doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter what you've experienced. When you change the narrative to something that serves you, you take your power back from any situation. And once you have that power, once you have that control for that narrative, you can start to write your own story. The story you've already lived through is already written, but you can take the pen and start writing the next chapter and the chapter after that and lead you to a better destination. That's the power that you have inside of you. So make sure that you take unwavering action and choose a better narrative for yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, Ray Borsier.